The head of the U.S. Navy has warned that the American military must be prepared for the possibility of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan before 2024, as Washington grows increasingly alarmed about the threat to the island. Admiral Mark Gilday, Chief of Naval Operations, said the U.S. had to consider that China could take action against Taiwan much sooner than even the more pessimistic warnings. The debate in the U.S. about when China might invade Taiwan has intensified since Admiral Philip Davidson, then head of the Indo-Pacific Command, told Congress last year that the Chinese military could take action against Taiwan before 2027. Davidson's warning was partly downplayed at the time, but officials have intensified their warnings over the past year. When we talk about the 2027 window, in my mind, that has to be a 2022 window or potentially a 2023 window, Gilday told the Atlantic Council on Wednesday. I don't mean at all to be an alarmist. It's just that we can't wish that way. Gilday's comments came two days after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said China was determined to pursue reunification on a much faster timeline. After deciding that the status quo was no longer acceptable, China claims sovereignty over Taiwan and has warned Washington not to encourage pro-independence forces in the country. At the opening of the Chinese Communist Party's 20th Congress on Sunday, President Xi Jinping admonished the U.S. for supporting Taiwan as he accused, quote-unquote, external forces of exacerbating tensions across the Taiwan Strait and suggested outside actors would shoulder the blame if China felt compelled to attack the country. Underscoring the mounting concern about Chinese military activity near Taiwan, which has increased in the wake of U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taipei in August, Joe Biden has on four occasions as president warned China that the U.S. would intervene to defend Taiwan from an unprovoked attack. Bonnie Glaser, a China expert at the German Marshall Fund, said the 2027 timeline was baked into U.S. thinking, particularly in the Pentagon and the intelligence community. But she said it seemed to be based on an assessment of when China would have the capability to invade Taiwan rather than on intelligence that provided information about Beijing's intent. We can't rule out anything, but stating that there is a 2022 or 2023 window is sheer speculation. I think it's irresponsible, said Glaser, who was skeptical of the view that China had to set a goal to invade by 2027. However, as U.S. officials sound alarms, Congress will soon vote on legislation that would fund weapons allocation for Taipei. The defense spending bill authorizes $10 billion over five years in what would be the first case of U.S. funding weapons sales to Taiwan. Taipei has previously paid for American weapons that have been approved for sale by Washington. Beijing considers Taiwan a rebel province and has never ruled out recapturing it by force. The island has been de facto independent of China since 1949, at which time Chiang Kai-shek's nationalists took refuge there after losing the civil war on the mainland to communists, making it the heir to the Republic of China founded in 1912. Gilday's prediction, made on 19th of October at a conference organized by the Atlantic Council, not only anticipates the Davidson window, but also the Taiwan window. In October last year, Taiwanese Defense Minister Chu Kong-cheng warned that China would achieve the capability to launch a large-scale attack against the island by 2025. Gilday's release is in line with what Asia News reported in late 2021, with the possibility of Chinese aggression on Taiwan before Taipei receives a major anti-ship missile delivery from the U.S. scheduled for 2023 and 2024. In his speech, Gilday emphasized that the U.S. fleet must be ready for a war scenario along the Taiwan Strait. And this is not because of Xi Jinping's bellicose words at the opening of the 20th Chinese Communist Party Congress, but because Beijing has been realizing its goals ahead of schedule for the past 20 years. However, the U.S. government leadership seems to less certain on the Taiwan issue. To soften the blow after Gilday's statements, the White House National Security Council spokesman declared yesterday that there is no reason for a conflict in the Taiwan Strait. On 17th of October, however, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken warned that China is pursuing reunification at a faster pace. Under the Taiwan Relations Act, 
The U.S. is committed to defending the island. Adopted in 1979 after the formal diplomatic recognition of communist China, the act does not specify the actual nature of Washington's commitment to Taiwan, a strategic ambiguity that produces continuing tensions with Beijing. Ask how the U.S. should respond to Xi's warning at the 20th Party Congress about Taiwan separatism. Admiral Michael Gilday, chief of the U.S. Naval Operations, said, It's not just what President Xi says, but it's how the Chinese behave and what they do. What we've seen over the past 20 years is that they have delivered on every promise they've made earlier than they said they were going to deliver on it he said in a discussion hosted by the Atlantic Council. So when we talk about the 2027 window, in my mind that has to be a 2022 window or potentially 2023 window. I can't rule it out. Gilday's time frame is based on an assessment last year by Philip Davidson, the retired admiral who was then head of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command that Beijing's military might try to unify Taiwan with mainline China within the next six years, addressing more than 2,200 delegates to the 20th Party Congress on Sunday. She reiterated that Beijing would not rule out the use of force to bring the island under its control. Resolving the Taiwan question is a matter for the Chinese, a matter that must be resolved by the Chinese, she said. We will continue to strive for peaceful reunification with the greatest sincerity and the utmost effort. But we will never promise to renounce the use of force, and we reserve the option of taking all measures necessary. Chinese Defense Minister General Wei Fenghe said his country was running into severe and grave national security conditions, and that it was important for the military to adhere to Xi's directives. Tensions between Washington and Beijing over Taiwan reached a critical point in August when U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taipei, prompting Beijing to start a round of unprecedented military exercises that all but surrounded the island. Beijing views Taiwan as a breakaway province to be reunited with the mainland by force if necessary. As is the case with many Western countries, the United States does not recognize the island as an independent state. But Washington is committed by law to support Taiwan's military defense capability, as stance Beijing strongly opposes. China was a key focus of a long-awaited national security strategy released by U.S. President Joe Biden last week. It identified major power competition with China as the most consequential geopolitical challenge facing America in the post-Cold War era. More broadly, Gilday said that he was prioritizing a Fight Tonight poster for the U.S. Navy over the efforts to expand the size of his fleet in response to what we're seeing from an increasingly aggressive China and Russia. Those circumstances, he said, had pushed the U.S. military to speed up alliances such as AUKUS, a military cooperation agreement with Britain and Australia to provide Australia nuclear-powered submarines. Gilday also cited his meeting with the Chief of Staff of Japan's Maritime Self-Defense Force, Admiral Sakai Ryo, during the 13th Transregional Sea Power Symposium, hosted by the Italian Navy earlier this month, as further evidence of deepening cooperation. The event is held every two years, drawing participants from more than 50 nations to discuss the latest developments in confronting maritime challenges. But this year's edition was the first to feature a Japanese participant of Rio's rank. There's little, if anything, that we can do on a day-to-day -day basis that we're not doing in concert with our allies and partners, Gilday said. Those relationships are absolutely critical. There are relationships that the Chinese or the Russians don't enjoy in the same numbers that we do. He added, We see it as an asymmetric advantage. U.S. needs to plan for a 2022 window, or potentially a 2023 window, in which Beijing might force unification. Admiral Michael Gide, chief of U.S. Naval Operations, says threats from China and Russia have created the need for a fight tonight poster. Gilde adds, a top U.S. Navy official said that the mainland Chinese invasion of Taiwan could take place as soon as this year. Based partly on comments by Chinese President Xi Jinping at a major political conference in Beijing this week, American political leaders and the general population are suffering from, quote-unquote, China blindness, failing to understand the nature of the threat to U.S. security posed by the communist regime. 
according to the admiral in charge of naval intelligence. Chinese President Xi Jinping is promoting a dark vision of a Chinese dream that seeks to diminish and ultimately replace the United States as the world's most powerful state, Rear Admiral Michael Studman said in a recent speech.